Hello everyone, today we will learn about employing praying mantises as biological control agents for the control of insect pests. Because praying mantises are very active and effective predatory insects that can uh, feed on different kinds of insect pests. Praying mantises uh, can be found naturally in uh, gardens, uh, nurseries, farms, forests and other landscapes. So far there are over 2000 species have been reported from the nature. However, only one species called Tenodera eridifolia is commercially available to use as a biological control agents for controlling uh, insect pests in the greenhouses, organic gardens, nurseries and other landscapes. Since praying mantises are active and effective predators of many insect pests, in this video, I will cover topics like identification and life cycle of mantids, how they control insect pests, share some examples of their uh, insect host and other organisms attacked by them, uh, talk about advantages and disadvantages of using them uh, as a biological control agents. And finally, I will talk about the appropriate uh, methods uh, timings and rates of their application for the control of insect pests. So why do mantids are called as a praying mantises? Although mantids have three pairs of legs, when they are resting, they hold their front pair of legs in such a way that they look like they are praying as uh, shown here in the uh, photo. And that is why uh, they are called as a praying mantises. Praying mantises are easy to identify because they are large size insects about 2 to 6 inches long with narrow body. They have triangular head with uh, two compound eyes with highly developed sight. They have flexible neck that they can rotate in a 180 degree to uh, locate their prey. They have three pairs of legs but their four legs are modified with the raptorial uh, claws that they use for catching their prey. Females lay eggs in a brown uh, colored um, cache uh, called Uthika that protects eggs during harsh winter conditions. Nymphs resemble their parents. Both nymphs and uh, adults can be uh, greenish or brownish in color. As shown on this slide, uh, both nymphs and uh, adults are known to camouflage uh, with uh, vegetation or surroundings to mislead their victims or protect themselves from their uh, natural enemies. The life cycle of uh, mantises is uh, very simple uh, as it consists of only three life stages including adults, eggs and nymphs. Life cycle begins when mated females uh, lay a, about uh, 100 to 400 eggs with a liquid substance that hardens to a protective case called uthika that remains attached to uh, twigs or branches during winter. Eggs hatch into small nymphs that resemble their parents. Immediately after hatching, nymphs try to feed on each other, but when they disperse away from egg cases, uh, they will start eating on soft-bodied insects like aphids. While feeding, nymphs will start mo molting, um, and they will molt five to six times and in, into six to seven stages or instars, and then become adults. Adults continue feeding. Uh, on large size insects throughout the summer. During fall, they will mate uh, at mating. Females will feed on males and then lay eggs. Thus, life cycle continues. Uh, Mantids will complete one generation in each growing season. Here is an illustration of how praying mantises can control insects pests like RB worms. As shown here, if mantises feed on both a larvae and adults of RB worms, then there will be no formation of pupae, uh, adult emergence or egg laying. Therefore, there will be no future generations of RB worms uh, produced and that is how mantids will control insect space uh, uh, like RB worms. Here are some examples of economically important insect pests that can be controlled using praying mantis as a biological control agents. This slide shows a few examples of other organisms including uh, lizards, wasps, spiders, honeybees 
and mosquitoes uh, that are attacked and killed by uh, praying mantises. There are several advantages of using praying mantises as a biological control agents for the control of economically important insect pests. The main advantage is that both nymphs and adults of mantises uh, can feed on immature and mature stages of insect pests that in turn stops their uh, future generation production, thus control of insect pest. They are easy to handle and uh, release. They are not harmful to uh, workers, pets, children, wildlife and the environment. Unlike chemical pesticides, they do not leave toxic residues behind. However, there are some disadvantages of using mantids as a biological control agents because they do not discriminate between insect pests and beneficial insects like honeybees when it comes uh, to selecting uh, their prey. For example, if we release them in an area where honeybees or bumblebees are released for pollination purpose, then they will eat uh, on both honeybees as well as insect pests. This means if uh, mantids eliminate the population of pollinators, then there will be no uh, flower fertilization that in turn can reduce the uh, crop yields. Uh, another disadvantage is that uh, they can attack um, other natural enemies of insect pests like lizards, spiders, and wasps. Therefore, do not use praying mantises, mantids uh, where pollinators are being used for the pollination purpose. So when is the best time to release the um, praying mantises for the uh, effective control of insect pest? Praying mantises are sold as egg cases. In each egg case, there are about 100 to 400 eggs. Uh, upon arrival and depending upon the uh, insect pest pressure, hang each uh, egg case randomly in bushes starting from early spring uh, throughout the uh, summer for effective control of insect pests. For effective control of uh, insect pests, uh, hang three to four uh, egg cases per 5,000 square foot area in the garden. Visit bugsforgovers.com to gain practical knowledge about organic growing, insect pest control practice that does not harm plants, people, or pets. Uh, to read blogs on biological control of insect pest of different crops, animals, and honeybee hives. Thank you for watching and if you like this video, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, look for next video on biological control of small hive beaters using entomopathogenic nematodes.